What is up guys? Welcome back to Final Fantasy 16. Last time we did a little bit of story quest and then went on a hunt for some hunts. We found one of them. The other two are still MIA, so we'll have to come back and do it again later. So anyway, we'll go back to the hideaway and we'll continue with the main story. Let's go talk to Mid. Yep, today is 4th of July, Rex. Hence the fireworks. You can't hear them, but I can hear them. I won't. I won't say anything, Benifer, if it happens or not. It's true. Just keep playing. But there's clearly something there. They've been hinting at that romance since the very beginning of the game, right? So, ever since they were standing on that balcony together, with Jill and uh, Clive. All right. I forget. Is there a workshop? Like, do I need to go? I think I go down. Lead? That's up. Okay, you gotta go down. Editors started reading well, that's because 15 had horrible writing and missed 10 DLCs. It had, was supposed to have like five DLCs and a movie and everything else tied into it to figure out what the hell is going on in that game. Because Luna Freya becomes a really good character if you watch King's Lave. But if you just play 15, she's there. All right, Mid, what's up? If I don't come up with something soon. All right, Clive? What do you want? I'm going to visit Sid, and I thought you might like to come with me. Sorry, I'm too busy for all that right now. I've got to get this thermal displacement stack sorted. Thermal... <laughs> displacement stack. Here. And uh, this is for... Only the fastest finest ship the world has ever seen the enterprise are we getting a ship a steam powered ship designed it together where all the vessels rely on the fickle winds to drive them through the water ours Call Captain is fitted with mithril engines and those things have got more push than a behemoth in a bad mood and more heat than all the hells put together which is where the stack comes in I may have already talked some tight-lipped ship rides into putting the hull together for me in a little dockyard in Canva. But the stack's a bit more involved, so I'm building it here. Thing is, it's so involved that I'm running behind and it's starting to hold things up over at the shipyard. I'll come and see my dad, though, when I'm done. Whenever that is. <sighs> is there anything I can do to help? Good old Clive. I was hoping you'd say that. First things first... I need some parts, Mekin. Uh. The stack will be made up of three major components. There's the plate in, here, that channels hot vapors away from the engine. The helm over the top, that disperses all that heat into the air. And the shield in around the sides, that stops the rest of the ship from going up in flames. A full suit of armor, then. Probably best to take it one piece at a time. Then you'll need to start with the plating. Everything else fits onto it. I've got the designs and the list of materials here. Show these to Blackthorn. He'll know what to do. Easy enough. I can't make it not tell of them. <laughs> Luckily, you don't need to. Yeah, Benefer. I mean, King. I thought the King's Lave movie was fine. The anime was kind of dumb. I agree. The Brotherhood anime or whatever. Um, I thought Nyx was a cool character from it, and I think he would have been a better protagonist than Noctis was. Uh, and there was a cool fight in there. And Luna gets some time on screen to actually talk and be a character. But yeah, overall, the execution of 15 was very bad. But that game was in development hell also, so it screwed everything up, I'm sure, as well. So. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. And the biggest problem I have was Arianea was my favorite character, and she they canceled her DLC. Come to claim your just desserts. A token. Many claim they wish to change the world. Few actually take it upon themselves to do so. You're an inspiration to us all. 800 ability points. You earned oh, yeah. this. Speaking Come of ability again. points, we've not done this in a while. What do we got now? 3,000. Holy shit. Okay. I kind of want to upgrade limit break. Um, How do I? I want to do... What is the button? This button. Yeah, we're doing limit break. All right. So we've mastered limit break now. Yeah, she was a massive waste of a character. And it was I was very upset by it. 
Uh, you're not missing much what we're talking about right now, though. Sharks in space. 15 was bad. Okay, let's go ahead and upgrade. I'm upgrade Pal Driver to, to Mastered. That means we could put Garuda back on. You know what we're going to end up doing? We're going to Master Judgment Bolt next. We'll switch to Garuda and use these two abilities with our pool ability. I like that yeah, idea. Oh, yeah. Because I don't like Ramu's iconic ability. We're seeing troops in that scenario. Yeah, I never. I, so actually, I've never played any of the 15 DLCs, any of 15's DLC, and apparently it's supposed to add a lot to the story. I don't know though. Never played it. I played 15 on release, and I was sad. <laughs> so, all right, Blackthorn, what up? Blackthorn, can I ask a favor? How with it? It's for mid. This is my last chance to say I'm otherwise engaged. Spare myself the our sake. Our sake. Go on then. What is it this time? She said you would know. Here. Thermal plating designs. Instructions on how to go about building one's, oneself a full set of thermal plating to dissipate... I can't read it because of the light in the background. Dissipating heat from around a mithril engine. Should one find oneself in need of such a thing? Okay. Ignis 1 is good. Prompt and Gladiator are terrible. Never played Arden. Arden was a shitty character Gladiator anyway, so... Fate. I don't know what the hell you'd want this for, but I can make it. Won't be easy though, and I'll need help. Oh, that's actually kind of cool, Benefer. Get Gavin Otto in here, will you? All right. Perhaps one day I'll go back and play the complete edition of 15 and suffer through it to see the DLCs and everything. So Lids roped us all in here again, has she? Typical. Still. If that's what it takes to get her to visit Sid's grave, I'll do what I can. And, uh, what is it we need to do, exactly? Take a look at this. It's this plating. The usual saw grade still won't work. We need something that can get very hot, very fast, and still keep its shape. That means an alloy. Something that won't break or buckle at the temperatures she's talking about. Which is where you lot come in. I need materials, and I've got my work cut out already. You'll have to fetch them. Now, there's a special kind of sand I'm after that you can only find out in the Valkroy. Stardust, they call it. As for the rest of the stuff, my usual supply should have it in stock. It just needs buying and bringing back here. Well, we'll get it done quicker if we split up. One of us should probably give you an hand coat in the sand. And the other can go and get the rest from this supplier. Right then. Well, make your minds up who's going where. We can get this over with. Well, I wonder where we're going. You going after the Stardust then, are you? Which one of these two lucky souls is going with you? Oh, we can pick. Let's bring Otto with us. We've, all, we've had Gav with us before. Otto? You're with me. All right, then. Where do we find this stardust, and how will we know it when we see it? There's a river that runs through the southern reaches of the Velcroy. It's the black sand that washes up on its banks that you're after. And I'm guessing you'll be needing sag loads of the stuff. Might be worth our importers and the Dalim I'll head down there. See about finding us a wagon. All right. I'll meet you by the river. You two take care, eh? I'll go and see the supplier. Just don't let that bastard fleece you, eh? Ah, he wouldn't do that. He's Blackthorn's mate. Isn't he? <laughs> Best of luck. That wasn't reassuring, Blackthorn. So yeah, the, the problem with... I mean, that's part of the problem. What you just said there about Ignis, Benefer, was like... In the original game, you don't get any of that context as to why he's blind and they never explain it. Because they meant to release a DLC, which is annoying. It's almost like it was cut content from the game that they then released again later on. Missed opportunity to give Gav an eye patch hammer in the Metal Gear reference. I know, right? I think I really I support the idea that Gav gets an eye patch. I've been saying it since the beginning. But Ambrosia gets an eye patch, so it's okay. That's our Chocobo who lost an eye. If anyone's wondering. B 
But yeah, Arianea was supposed to get a DLC and they canceled it. I don't know if you knew that or not, Benefer. Like that was the last DLC slated for the game. Looks like I found the river. But they came out years late. Oh, yeah, I was so hyped whenever we got Ambrosia back. And then when she got the eye patch, I'm like, fuck yeah, here we go. Fly yeah. Ambrosia. Straight home now. Otho. Sorry I'm late. Oh, Clive. I had a quick scout about, and I reckon this area is our best bet. Seems Blackthorn's the only one who thinks smithing with his stardust stuff's a good idea. We were just here. He's just lying here, waiting for any old fool to fill his boots. But unlike any old fool, you thought to bring a wagon. Well spotted. Now get filling. I, I mean, I guess I can see why Arden's story is really important to the world of 15, being that he was the main bad guy and you had literally no reason for him to be a bad guy. Like, they never really explain it very well. But also, Arianea was a cool character. You deserve a rest. One Stardust? So this is Stardust. <laughs> it just looks like Black Sand to me. Two Stardust? No more over here, right? No. Oh. We're playing Legend of Dragoon, not collecting Stardust. And three. Oh, wrong button. Right button, wrong icon. That should be enough for now. Easy enough. Let's see how Otto's getting on. Oh, you 100% completed F15 when now. it came out. Faster. You might be a masochist. I was, that's impressive that you did that. Yeah, I quit. I did not do any of the end game stuff. After I finished this, I like literally beeline for the story after a point and I quit playing it. Cause the best part of the game was the boys safe? traveling through Midwestern United States, stopping at burger joints and hunting monsters. <laughs> then after that, it just went horribly poor. How much did you get? Enough, I hope. Second cost fallacy, yeah. More than me. <laughs> uh, put it all together and I can't see Blackthorn complaining. Much. Here, yeah, Clyde. Do you fancy a walk? Oh. Are we gonna have a conversation? I wish we would have did we should have brought Gav, damn it. It's fine. Sid would be proud. Of what? Of you, you idiot. Maybe not. I like Otto. Why you've carried on what he started. When we first met, I had you down as a spoiled little puppy who enjoyed nothing more than biting the hand that fed you. But five years on, you're the one doing the feeding. So thanks for proving me wrong. You weren't wrong. But I changed. Thanks to Sid. And thanks to you. When I suggested taking on his name, you were the first to back me. And if you hadn't, no one else would have. I couldn't have done any of this without you, Otto. Don't give over. You're making me blush. All I did was choose hope over despair. I gave you a chance. Yes. But you're the one who took it. You took a rabble of homeless, hopeless outcasts and put them back on their feet. Gave them something worth fighting for, just like the old Sid did. Oh, that was a nice conversation then. I'm glad we brought Otto actually now. It's a lot retried. The game was in development hell and that fucked everything up pretty much. About time I was heading back, I reckon. All this scrabbling about in the sands taking its toll on the old pins. I'll see you back at the hideaway then. 
You can take a well-earned rest when you get there. Oh, I plan to. Believe you me. But I'll make sure Blackthorn gets his precious black sand before I put my feet up. He'll only moan otherwise. Alright, back we go. So that, that conversation would change them if you brought Gav. Ready to go home, boy? <laughs> Good boy. He deserves one pet. <laughs> All right. To the hideaway. Let's hope this is all Blackthorn needs. This is part one of the quest, it looks like, too. Blackthorn, got everything you need. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Cheers for the stardust. Should be enough to be getting on with. Nice to get out and about for once. Do it again sometime, eh? I'll make a start on putting this thermal plating together then. It'll take some time, mind. So if you've got other things to be getting on with, I could do without you breathing down my neck. Yes, sir. Thank you, Blackthorn. I'll let Mid know construction's underway. All right, part one complete. 40 renown. Good. Good, very good. Suppose we'd better be getting back to work too. Give us a shout if you need anything. All right, guys. Thank you for your time. I'll see you later. He cracked the crystal too. There's like no easy way to get to where Mid's at, which is kind of annoying. You're joking. It's no joke. Can I go this way? I guess I can. I don't think we've ever went this way before. No, I don't think we have actually. Yeah, the game wasn't even supposed to be Final Fantasy 15 originally retry. It was supposed to, it was called something else. Final Fantasy. It was like a, supposed to be like a fighting game originally. Or something like that. reading books that don't have any pictures in. Yeah, versus 13, that's right. Soon. You'll be pleased to hear that Blackthorn started work on the plating. Excellent. One down, two to go. So, what's next? The helm, of course. Of course. For this, we'll be repurposing fallen scrap. Salvage from the ruins? I thought that material was all but impossible to work. Ah, but we don't have to. I'm sorry. Just so happens there's one particular ruin that's broken into exactly the right shape and size pieces for what we need. Convenient. What's her name back there? I'll give you all details. What's her name? What's her name? Right. Helena. Oh, Sid, is this about the helm? Uh, yes. Mid said I should speak with you. I'll show you the plans then. Here you see the mithril engine in which mithril is burned to generate heat. That heat is then harnessed to produce motive force. Excess heat is dealt with by means of the thermal displacement stack, which disperses it into the surrounding air. We're getting now, steampunky. Were we to rely on thermal plating alone to achieve this effect, the rate of excess heat buildup would far exceed the displacement coefficient of the plating. In other words, the reactor would overheat and eventually explode. This is where the helm comes in. It connects to the plating, you see, and serves as a sort of thermal sink to absorb all that excess energy. It's a heat sink. Our experiments have shown that fallen ceramics are remarkably thermophilic. They can withstand and absorb levels of heat far above anything we are able to make today. And not only that, they're also waterproof and immune to rust, making them the perfect material for our protective hood. Why, if sea or rainwater were to enter the reactor proper, it would vaporize instantly. 
The forces produced would tear the ship from stern to... You can stop there. I understand. Mid said we might be able to use parts of a fallen ruin. Where would I find it? Ah, yes. It's in Lorbert's Pass near Lostwing. The thing is, well, I probably should have arranged to have the pieces we need brought here sooner. You see, a certain unwanted visitor has taken up residence there. It's no longer a matter of just walking in and taking them. It's, um, going to be considerably more dangerous than that. I see. Then I suppose I'd better deal with this unwanted visitor for you. Would that help? Oh, very much. Thank you, Sid. I'll gather my team and head there right away. We'll meet you outside the ruins. So you said, you know what silly putty is, right? Well, have you heard of serious putty? Serious putty is C4. Uh, I did not know that about uh, silly putty, though, Benever. That's a fun fact. I did not know Ziploc made body bags during World War II, but I'm not surprised by that, actually. I've been on a World War II kick recently. I've been listening to a podcast about the we'll Manhattan Project. to a storehouse in the bales. Leave anything you don't need behind. Oh, yeah, they're going to war in Lost Wing. That's right. But, yeah, I've been listening to a podcast on the Manhattan Project, and so me and Kelsey watched a couple episodes of Band of Brothers last night. America, fuck yeah. Um, it's really good if you've never watched it. It's on HBO. Um, and, um, so basically I wouldn't be surprised if, you're ready, if, um, we leave at once. cause the, all the American industrial complex essentially was fully put towards World War II. So I wouldn't be surprised. You have with your band of brothers right now yourself. Nice. Uh, I don't, I, I'm slight. I think the Oppenheimer movie could be interesting. We'll see. You're in the box set for band of brothers. Incredible series, right? Um, they might have used, I think they did use amphetamines in World War II. Fly Ambrosia. But yeah, the, the podcast series I'm listening to on the Manhattan Project is incredibly good. Almost started playing Company of Heroes last night again. Yeah, so Rex, it's Band of Brothers and the the, uh, the the Pacific is the other one. I see that. I'm pretty sure I slight passing an interest in nukes. You should watch the Oppenheimer movie. Oh, really, Kenny? Straight home now. Oh, there you are, Sid. Um, thanks so much for coming. The, uh... Ruins are just over there, as is the creature I told you about, I'd imagine. Would you, uh, would you mind? Of course. I'll be right back. You have your, your bachelor's in history. That's actually, so Kenny, fun fact, fun fact for stream too. I might have said this before. So when I graduated high school originally, I wanted to be a history teacher. So I was going to go to school for history and go for my master's and then probably do a doctorate, like go the whole way through so I could be a professor. Cause it, well, there's two things. I wanted to be a history teacher, like high school level and be a football coach. Cause I love football. Uh, and then the other thing I was, the other option would have been to go for like masters and doctorate to be a professor of history at a college. Um, so what, what I ended up doing was I actually took, I went to school for electrical engineering. I know, right? Pivot, hard pivot, but I took a bunch of history classes while I was there and, and, and I ended up being like one class away from a minor in history by accident. Cause I was taking like upper level history classes, which were exceedingly harder than I expected them to be. Cause like you're reading all these books and doing all these reports. Plus I had the engineering stuff going on. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a fun fact. I was originally going to go to school for history. Anybody home? Oh, it's an, it's an airman or an eyeball or whatever they call this, this one. Be our unwanted visitor. Time to go. Oh, just unwanted visitor is his name. 
Oh, you can't dodge, Doom. Ow, laser beams. I don't think that Doom's a one-shot in this game, though. God damn it. That's Shred, Shred's the stagger bar. Oh, pass through him. Shit, he bit me! Can't see. Yeah, that, yeah, that. Goodbye. I, I like quick, so I've always been a sucker for quick time events ever since I played the first God of War game. So I don't mind them. The things I do for you, Mid. Sid! Oh, thank goodness you're safe. You shouldn't have any trouble now. Indeed. Well, don't let us keep you. We'll, um, see that everything is transported safely back to the hideaway. All right. I'll let Mid know you're on your way. So I feel like they put the art, the, the specifically the quick, the events where you press R2 to open doors, like the bigger doors where you have to hold it down. They did it for the uh, haptic feedback on the controller or whatever it's called. But yeah, between God of War and the, the Naruto games, I'm a sucker for quick time events. Oh, just wait, Benefer. I won't spoil anything, but there's a fucking crazy fight when you turn into a free coming up for you. Yeah, I normally turn haptic feedback off. I have it on for this game because it only uses it for the doors. All right, we're going back to the hideaway. Hopefully. So there's one more part to make after this. I'm assuming we're, we're building the Enterprise because if we're going to Balud, um, they were known to have a super fast Navy, and I'm sure the ship's going to play a part in that. If I had to guess. Plus, you get a ship in a lot of Final Fantasy games. And then I bet you make, we either make it fly, I bet we make it fly eventually. Started reading books that don't have anything. I'm going the wrong way. You think about buying a PS5 controller for your computer since you plan on to play um, any next gen stuff on Steam? Uh, it's not a bad idea. Uh, personally, I'm still a fan of the Xbox, the Xbox One controller for any PC game that I play with that the controller. But I mean, the PS5 controllers are nice. Mid. Helena has recovered the material for the helm. She'll be along shortly. Excellent. Another job well done. And just one remaining. Right. Right. The shield in. This one's a bit of a bugger. How so? The plating's enough to stop the engines going pop, but those things will still be spitting out enough fire to set the rest of the ship ablaze. Which is why you need proper shield in. A prison for the dragon's breath that's blazing away inside. I thought a triple thick layer of tempered steel might do it. Or more of the stuff that the Fallen use, but they'd both be too heavy. The helm and the plating are bulky enough as it is. Add any more weight and the whole ship would be at the bottom of the briny before we'd even started. I need something light. But I've wrapped my brains and I just can't think what I'd do it. Well, if I were in need of obscure knowledge, I know whose counsel I would seek. Harpocrates. Tomes? 
Yeah. Well, I'd thought of that, obviously. Obviously. I've got all the details written down here. Can you take this to him? See what he makes of it? Right away. I wonder if any of the problems with the PS5 controllers and everything were any like just due to like material shortages during COVID, so they had like skimp on certain things. I don't know, I'm just I'm, out of curiosity, I wonder if that ties into it in some way. I still want my retro PS1 skin for my PS5 that never existed. You prefer keyboard mouse? You play ro lo Rocket League with keyboard mouse? That makes sense. I, I can see that, Rex. It really comes down to preference, right, for a lot of things. I mean, there are certain games that are definitely designed for keyboard and mouse for and designed for controller, but um, I've never played Rocket League, so I don't know. Right, Ben, for the bigger issues, they aren't resolving those problems, right? That's for the PS5 Pro, obviously. Hippocrates, do you have a moment? For you, Clive, always. I don't think I could either. Sharks in space. This time, could you take a look at this? Thermal shielding design, a baffling diagram made all the more confounding by the preponderance of question marks that blemish its border. Preponderance, I like that word. Hmm. <laughs> shielding for a mithril engine. I've about a thousand hours and 14 benefit. Think of next. And what are these notes around the edges? She has some specific requirements for the materials. The shielding needs to be able to resist extreme heat on the inside, and yet remain cool enough on the outside not to set the ship alight, while also being light enough not to sink it. As you can imagine, she's struggling to find anything that meets her needs. It's good, Benefer. Really good. Incredible story. I wondered if you might know of a solution, or if you might be able to search the records for one. Hmm. Perhaps it is not a different material she requires, but a different approach. What do you mean? Consider the lake we have made our home. Its blighted waters eat away far more quickly than fresh water or even brine, at timber and steel alike. And yet, we have made a home here from those very materials nonetheless. We have. But Bardolf must varnish every board twice over to keep it from rotting. And Obelisk complains that without a constant supply of... <sighs> Pitch. I see. Early Gregorian histories speak of a preparation known as Moondew. It is said to be able to resist even the most ferocious flames. So we're going to coat it then. Before the dragoons tamed the worms and wyverns of the realm, nobles would daub their castle walls with it in order to guard against dragon fire. So if we could recreate it... It might be applied to some material or other in order to provide the protection it requires. As to how best to apply it and to what material, perhaps Bardolf and Obelus might be of assistance. I shall speak to them and see what wisdom they might have to offer. If you would be so kind as to procure the necessary ingredients, I shall discuss the specifics of how it might be most effectively put to use with our two friends. The knowledge of the past may yet prove useful to we of the modern era. History. Thank you, Hippocrates. And since you're asking others to help you, perhaps I should too. So you need a hand, do you? We do. I'll be heading to market for the ingredients we need. I could do with some help. And some company too. The other can assist me in researching how best to prepare the shielding itself. Can we count on your aid? Always. Well, if Jill's game. Thank you. I am sure either of these fine young minds would prove indispensable in my research. I leave the decision as to who will go with whom in your capable hands, Clive. Is Mother Base from Metal Gear, Benefer? So, Clive, 
Have you made your decision? Who will accompany you on your little excursion? Uh, no, I've never played. Uh, that's from Metal Gear 5, I think, right? I'm aware of it, but I've never... I have it on Steam. I just never played it before. We're going to bring Taria because we don't. We never talked to her. All right. So, what are we fetching? No, they both like us, Rex. I have taken the liberty of preparing a list. Here. Garlic. Conch shells. Are you sure this is the right list? Looks like the ingredients for someone's supper. Though these items may seem mundane, they have potent effects that are rarely exploited. Effects for which they were once highly prized. So much so, in fact, that they were harvested almost to extinction, hence Moondews having fallen from favor. Now, of course, they can be obtained with ease. You should be able to find everything you need at the market in Northreach. Well, isn't that convenient? I was hoping to be able to make a trip over that way sometime soon. Need to speak to an old acquaintance. I'll meet you there. All right. Stay safe. So I, we, I picked Taria because we never talked to her, but we should have probably brought Jill. Good luck with your research. I don't know. It was like, that's a hard choice. I want to hear more about Taria, but also maybe Jill and Clive had some like relationship building going on there if we would have brought her. Um, but yeah, Final Fantasy XIV is really good, Benefer. Um, a Realm Reborn, so the first part of the game is, is a little slow which is typical of an MMO. Um, but the class quests are really good. Um, you can skip a lot of the, the the written dialogue and only watch the cutscenes in A Realm Reborn to make it go a little faster. And then once you get to Heaven's Word, it's all incredible after that. A Realm Reborn is a good story. It's just very slow. But yeah, I recommend skipping all of the dialogue except for the cutscenes themselves and a little bit here and there. Like, you don't need to, like read everything out loud but you gotta figure when a realm reborn came out it was a remake of the original 14 that failed and they 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 really wanted to lengthen that first part of the game because they didn't probably know if it was gonna do well or not no where's talia and their budget was tighter so a lot of things weren't voice acted now if you play like a newer expansion like n walker everything is uh voice acted and stuff and they actually tie the idea of the world being reborn into the main it's, it's, it's a it's a critical point of the main story of 14 it's really cool uh it, it has exceptional writing Keep them pilchers nice and chill. need to stock up on I won't have used. there you are talia i play a dragoon obviously ah, and there you are we shouldn't have any problems finding what we need in a place like this but if time is of the essence perhaps we should split up take a few items each all right. What shall I look for? Let's see now. Why don't you take the garlic and the pepio nuts? Meet me by the gate when you've got them. Okay. Pepio nuts it is. Buy, sell, or be gone. If that's what you want. Actually, hold on, sir. Buy, sell, or be gone. How the hell is anyone supposed to afford that? Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Really think about what class you want to pick. Uh, and let me, actually, if you don't mind, let me know what class you're going to play because you want to make sure you pick a class that's available at the beginning of the game because other classes become available as you get to each expansion that have level requirements for them. So you want to pick something. You want to make sure you're going in playing a class that you can play from the start of the game. And then you can always pivot later on. Any friend of the innkeeper is a friend of mine. That should do it. Hopefully Ty is finished too. I don't think they've changed that since I played last. It's been a little while. I haven't played for about a year. You'll not find a bruised pippin in the bushel. And they also they also made it now that like you can play 14 as a single player game if you so desire to. Um because all the dungeons have AI that you can run that they'll run them with you, um, as opposed to having actual people. I, I would say go for actual people instead, but that's up to you, obviously. Yeah, class switching is not as is not as limited as it is in like World of Warcraft. You don't need to make a new character or anything. No, I haven't played 14 in like a year. Um, it's a job system, so you just switch jobs. Well, you pick a base class that you level, and they changed it a lot since when I first started playing. When I started playing, you had to level your main class and a subclass to unlock your job. So for Dragoon, you had to level Lancer, and then also level Marauder. I think it was called. It's called. And then when you get each of those to a certain level, you can do your job quest for Dragoon, 
and unlock that and then you your job is dragoon that uses the uses so your base skills are still lancer but you have dragoon abilities on top of that so i think they changed that a little bit from then now you don't have the level two classes to do it anymore but it was a cool gameplay mechanic that i really liked um back in the day when i played um but they've definitely streamlined it a little bit more now so that you can get through stuff a little faster never played guild wars well did you find everything i did here Give her the garlic and the nuts. Garlic and pepio nuts. Job done. We should get this back to Tomes then. He'll be waiting. Oh. Oh, wait, here we go. Boss, we're not in too much of a rush, are we? Quick chat. Good. I wanted to talk to her a little more. We. She never. She doesn't get a lot of uh, screen time, really. So I want to hear what she has to say about everything. Do you know, I think this is the very first time we've been out on an errand together. <laughs> I think you might be right. In all the years since you and that scowl of yours first appeared, you haven't invited me out once. For shame. Well, it seemed long overdue. And you did say you had some shopping to do. Jill is jealous as fuck right now. I my supplies of herbs and liniment, yes. You and Jill alone burned through them like wildfire. No luck, though. My usual supplier's not here, and I refuse to pay the prices these gougers charge. I'll ask Karen when we get back. What is it? Oh, just memories. I came here with Sid once, shopping for supplies, just like today. And just like today, I came away empty-handed. Sid even said he'd speak to Karen for me when we got back. Has it really been five years? I remember it as if it was yesterday. Hold on. Does that mean it's been five years since we met? Feels a lot longer. It does. In a good way, of course. Thank you, Taya. For what? For everything. I just want you to know that all you've done for us well, you still do. It's appreciated. Do you think I'd stick around if I thought it wasn't? But in the spirit of sharing and caring... You're appreciated too. By all of us. Tarya Rauch. I, I thought about that whenever I picked Tarya. I was like, what if this is like a... A romance route you choose right now. Well, I think we've tarried long enough. I ought to get these ingredients back to Tomes so he can make up this concoction of his. I'll meet you back at the hideaway, all right? All right. And thanks again. I heard you the first time. Cloud taking on the mantle of Sid is very Metal Gear as well, by the way. A lot of Metal Gear references. That's that's kind of cool, actually. Um, so, thankfully, I don't think that was a romance choice, so we're good. Um, I am really curious to see what the Gav and Jill conversations would have been like if we brought them instead. But I chose Otto and Tarya just so we could like get some more on those characters because we don't get a lot of them normally. I wonder how Hippocrates is getting on with the Moon Dew. All right, let's see what we got. How's work on the shielding progressing, Hippocrates? Well, very well indeed. And thanks in no small part to your kind assistance. I was just explaining to Taya how we might best go about preparing the moon dew. And now that we have all the ingredients, we may begin. You can count on me. 
I've mixed more than a few mysterious concoctions in my time. <laughs> I'm sure you have. What about the shielding itself? Work is underway, under the watchful eyes of Bardolf and Obelus. Apparently, it'll be ready soon. Thank you. All of you. Right then. Jill, would you join me in the infirmary? Many hands make light work and all that. Of course. Oh, and Clive. It was good to talk. We should do it again sometime. Wait, no. Well, yes, but like, no. It appears our work here is almost at an end. A shame. I was enjoying playing the man of action for once. The what, Rex? When both the shielding and the moon dew are ready, it will merely be a matter of applying the one to the other, followed by a rigorous process of testing and retesting, of course. Perhaps someone ought to warn young Mid of that. Leave it to me. Thank you, Hippocrates. Hey, we're done now, I think, finally, with the, with the mid runaround quests. So hopefully we'll get us to his grave now. That's what we've been building to, at least, right? That is crazy how many, how many based off what you were saying, Benefer, how many references oh, there are. I better go and give Mid the good news then. So Cookie, you said I picked the same route as you, so you can't so you can't you can't tell me what happens. Damn it. Alright, that's alright. Probably can look it up. I mean, I'm assuming that romantically Clive and Jill are locked in. Obviously. Oh, where am I going? Not the right way. Let me out! Hey! I don't know, what, what is the Fulton? What is that? Is that a Metal Gear thing again? Should I play Metal Gear 5? Is that the one? Should I, I've, no, I've never played any of the games before. Would that be a bad place to start? Wait, yes to... I should play it or should... A horrible place to start. Okay, okay. Editors started reading books that Snake Eater's the best one. Well, let's get in a remake. And they're releasing the, the three of them, right? On, like, current consoles or whatever. So I could, I could play them that way. One, two, and three, at least. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mid. But you'll be pleased to know that work on the shielding is underway. You found something for it. In a manner of speaking, Hippocrates knew of a substance that's highly resistant to heat. A coating that should provide the protection you need. He's supervising the construction and testing of the shielding as we speak. Brilliant! I knew you wouldn't let me down. Oh, thank me. I'm just the errand boy. Right then. Better start working out how to bolt all these bits together. To the Black Hammer! Oh, we're not... okay. We're doing this first, I guess. You know, when I got into the smithing game, I thought I'd be making swords and shields, not thermal bleeding didgeridoo does. Didgeridoo does. Displacement stacks. Same difference. Whatever you call it, I ain't putting it together in here. It's cramped enough as it is. Let's take this outside. Mid, you get all the parts lined up on the deck. I'll take care of the rest. On my way. Oh, and bring me the biggest salmon you can find. This is going to require some precision wallabing. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean now, Rex. I got gotcha. you. Sometime later. Why is it playing serious music? There it is. Hopefully it works. If not, our ship's gonna burst into flames. It's finished. It's finally finished. Thank fuck for that. I'll be feeling my hammer arm for weeks. Thank you, Clive, Blackthorn, everyone. That's one down and just three more to go. Oh, shit. 
I'm sorry. Oh, didn't I tell you? The Enterprise has four mithril engines, and we'll be needing a displacement stack for each. You don't mean... <laughs> don't worry. Now they've got a finished one to work off, my gang in Canva can build the rest. Good luck to them, I say. Right, I'm off to get a sling for this elbow. Any other work comes in, keep it to yourselves, eh? Does anyone know when that Metal Gear collection comes out? All right. Speak with Mid. What's the matter? Nothing. Just daydreaming. Thinking about the Enterprise sailing off over the horizon to shores unknown. Searching for a land untouched by the blight. Just like me and my dad planned. So if the worst came to the worst and every scrap of soil in the twins turned black, we might still have a chance. Thanks, Retry. That's what she was meant to be. You see, one last chance just in case we needed it. But now she's so close to being finished, I've realized I don't want her to be that. I don't want her to be just a lifeboat for us to cling to if things get desperate. I want... I want people to sail a border by choice, not from the lack of it. In a world where we're not just trying to survive, but where we can actually live. I'm working on that. And I'll do everything I can to get you what you want. <laughs> Don't you always? All right. My mind's made up. As soon as the Enterprise is fit to sail, I'm putting her under your command. We are a ship, so Captain. Plans. I'm trusting in yours. Almost. Are you sure about this? Something tells me it's what my dad would have wanted. He'd be proud of you. You, um, you were going to visit his grave, weren't you? I was. And you can come too now that your little project is finished. Right. There's just one thing I need to finish up first. Won't be a mo. A mo? All right. I'll let Otto know you're coming. Meet us in the mess when you're ready. Aye, aye, Captain. Yeah, I knew about the remake on Xbox 360. Or the from I didn't know they were done by Blue Point. That's kind of cool actually. But um, yeah. So I'll probably play the Steam version of the new ones that come out, or the re-release that comes out for them. Cause I would like to check out the series at some point. All right, Clive. Astrid, we'd finished sending half the Hideaway tropes in across the twins. Actually, I swear that girl do anything to put off visiting her old dad's grave. No excuses now, though, eh? Not quite. She said there was one final thing she had to take care of. I'm sure she'll be finished soon enough. She said that? In those words? She did, yes. Clive. Were you born yesterday or something? There is no thing. Oh. She'll probably be halfway to Canva by now. Oh, mid. I might still be able to catch her. Well, she'd have to take the boat. Oh, we're going right here. Okay. Yeah, the series has always interested me, so I'll have to check it out. Obelus, have you seen Mid? Yep. In a boat. <laughs> going that way. <sighs> then I'm too late. Mm, you in a hurry at all, are ya? Oh, I offered to take her across, but she wouldn't wait. Just paid for a dinghy and rode off. Oars going like the clappers. <laughs> Got some life in her, ain't she? But anyway, I was on my way up to see you, as it happens. Got a letter for you. Urgent, by the sound of it. One of your uncle's men said oh, I was no. to it to you in person, post-bleeding haste. And you're here now. Thank you, Obelus. Don't mention it. What is wrong? What tidings, uncle? My dear boy, my journey to Canberra has been a resounding success. The friend I mentioned not only agreed to share the contents of a strong box with us, but has considerable knowledge of the uh, going-ons in the free cities, by which I learned of the endeavors of a certain young friend of yours. Though I, for one, believe Miss Telemon's project to be quite the valiant enterprise, 
I doubt the Canaverian authorities will take kindly to the unauthorized use of their docks, no matter how deserted. And if rumor has already reached my friend, it may not be long enough before the guild masters are, are rapping at our door. Which is why I pen you this note. I would like to borrow your man Gav for a moon or two, that he might keep watch on those who might mean our, our little fellowship ill, and warn us of any impending attacks. I trust that you'll give, us, give this proposal your full consideration, your loving uncle, Byron. Troubling Canva. Well, I'll need someone to keep an eye on mid. So what? Mid got us to do all the dirty work and then just sailed off into the sunset? It, uh, seems that way. Well, nothing we can do about it now. But next time you plan on visiting Sid, you might want to tie her to something before you suggest it. Ah, oh, don't be so hard on her. Gotta admit, the dirty work was kind of fun. Everyone pitching in, all that bollocks. Just like when we built this place. <laughs> You're right. Anyway, we all set to head to the old hideaway. I could do with getting to Canva pretty sharpish. Wouldn't do to keep Lord Rosfield of the Seven High Houses waiting now, would it? Not after he asked for me personally. Gav will be leaving with me. Will you mind the place while we're gone? You can count on me. Just be sure we'll give Sid and the others my regards. All right. Oh, by the way, Jill will be joining us too. She's got some things to take care of, but she'll meet us there. I hope she's telling the truth at least. Death flag number 13. What? Oh, oh, Sid's legacy. Okay, we have another another main quest or another side quest to pick up here too. But before we do that, I'm gonna wrap up this episode for YouTube right here. So if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.